Hello and welcome. Um, it's great to see you all here. This is the second installment of our uh, research seminar here at the Japan Research Center at SOAS. My name is Fabio Gigi and I'm here with Dr. Jona Siderer. So we decided for this term to focus on both uh, science and technology in contemporary Japan, but also on the history of science. And uh, this talk really came about, came out of a discussion that we had after a talk given last term by Dr. Aya Home. And so I invited Dr. Sidor because I realized that her work is really very interesting and, and fills sort of a, a gap that we haven't really addressed, which is um, looking at the history of science uh, in Japan and more importantly also in the sort of transnational context of how knowledge is created, how things are translated. So um, Dr. Uh, Jona Siderer um, is at the Edelstein Center uh, for the History and Philosophy of Science, Technology and Medicine at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. Uh, she holds a bachelor and a master in science in physical chemistry from the Hebrew University of Jerusalem, a PhD from the Weizmann Institute of Science and an MBA from Tel Aviv University. So she has had a very long and distinguished research career that took her from Israel to Japan, to the USA, to Italy and to England. She is also a poet uh, and a painter, as you can see um, in the background, and she has published uh, several um, uh, poems in English, but also in Japanese. Um, she's a member of the Japanese Society for the History of Chemistry, um, among other associations. Um, and her talk today is entitled um, Udagawa Yoan, Pioneer of Botany and Chemistry Studies in Japan from Western Sources. I'm very happy to chair today. Welcome, Dr. Yona Siderer, and over to you. Thank you very much, Fabio. Thank you for the invitation. Um, if I may have the first slide, please. By Zoom. So that's our destiny nowadays. Thank you. <laughs> Next one, please. So my uh, uh, talk will be uh, concentrating on short bio of Udagawa Yohan. He lived in the first half of the 19th century. His chemistry studies, Semi Kaiso, Introduction to Chemistry, I mainly talk about. And it's a revised version of 1975. Then I'll speak about botany in Shokogaku Kagen, Principle of Botany, and his plant drawing, fabulous uh, paint drawing. And I give an example. Uh, the main point is the direct and direct, indirect sources from which he translated and studied. And I bring one example, a botany book by Strangel uh, that uh, um, Funciebold gave to Johan. And then I want to stop on the acknowledgement. Many people helped me along the way and reference and the article about the chemistry was published in last March in Substantia Journal of the History of Chemistry. So you'll see it again later. Next one, please. So a short bio, he was born 1798 and passed away 1846. And he was a scholar of many talents and I touched few of them today. He was a medical doctor, like Chinese, uh, Japanese medical doctor of Tsuyama town in Okayama, which is in central Honshu. And nowadays he studied chemistry, other topics like musical instrument, geography, history of Holland, playing cards. And he wrote an early article about coffee and many more. He studied many languages like classic Chinese in his childhood, Dutch, and then somewhat German, Latin, Greek. And I saw in uh, Tsuyama uh, archive, uh, Arabic letters that he copied. 
It is also told to stay in, on a British ship for three nights in order to learn English. Next one, please. Here is a, a, a drawing showing uh, Udagawa Yohan Sensei, and the first page of Semi Kaiso will take another look at it soon. Next one. Before Semi Kaiso, that I'm going to speak about, he also wrote other chemistry books, including metal chemistry, dyeing of fabric chemistry, uh, earth chemistry, non metal chemistry, and note on Western mineral springs, and he made experiments of water content in several provinces. So not too good on a guy. Here is the first page of Semi Kaiso, and on the left side, I found uh, the full set of seven books at the St. Edison Collection of the History of Science at the National Library of Israel in Jerusalem. And uh, Dr. Sidney Edelstein was a chemist and industrialist in America and a bibliophile. And he do donated his collection of old scientific books to the um, National Library of Israel. It's excellent. And the first page that we see on the right gives on the upper line the date, which equals to 1837. In the middle is the title, and semi is like uh, shimi in French or uh, Dutch. And on the left side of the first page, there is a warning against uh, uh, forgery, uh, against uh, forty false uh, production of this book. Okay. Introduction to Chemistry, and is considered the first book on modern chemistry in Japan. And it was print, published along uh, 10, 11 years. And the book translated for uh, several lang European languages. And the question I ask is what books did Udagara Yuan translate from? Here we see the first two pages of for the guy on Semi Kaiso, book one, volume one, page seven. And we see several circles there. So each circle gives the first letter of the author in the country, abbreviated, and the name of the book according to Johan's translation, and some names of some, some books. So altogether, a, a 20, 24 circles. And it's written in kanji and katakana that was, were used those days. And we take another look at it uh, later. Okay, please. So a list of the authors that uh, appeared on that page include uh, many names. I don't call, read all of them, but I highlighted Lavoisier from France, which was translated by Ipe, a Dutch fellow. Henry also was very much used, and Henry was from England, very popular. Uh, Guiton de Morvaux, a contemporary and colleague of Lavoisier, method de, uh, de nomenclature chimique, they wrote together with two other fellows. Tromsdorf from Germany, uh, he wrote his own chemistry book, but also translated uh, Henry's book. Segur is another interesting story. I'm not stopping on it today. Letters from a friend who studied in Paris chemistry to his friend who didn't attend the lecture, and it was translated into Japanese. And Kat Smolenburg is a Dutch, and he mentioned many other books, other chemists that Johan didn't have, and you had, could learn from those. Okay, please. So from those books, he could uh, uh, find 
uh, what Berselius from Sweden wrote, Davry from England, Dulon, Gay-Lussac from uh, of France, and many more. So actually he studied more than the book he listed above, and from those he chose what text and what author to cite. He really wanted to make uh, the material digestible to Japanese readers. Some, more, most of the things were very new to them, and it, he also wanted it to be applicable, that they can use what they learn to uh, implement in chemical uh, uh, experiments or chemical uh, uh, industry. Okay. Here we can see some of the uh, first pages of some of those books translated. On the left, very left, is the uh, Lavoisier, a trait element de chimie, and next to it is its Dutch translation. In the middle is William Henry Chemie, Dutch translation of 1803. And on the very right is the uh, Lehrburder Sekunde in Dutch from 1877. So really those things were left in the Udagawa house and then collected. And Udagawa yon's belonging are now kept in at least four places in Japan. In, uh, uh, um, in Osaka, I'll mention later, in uh, Tsuyama, the town he came from and where his graveyard is now and also in Kyoto University and Waseda University also held in Tokyo a lot of his belonging. Some published and some just a draft of what he was studying. Okay. Here another example, Bergman from Sweden, chemistry in French and also in uh, uh, Dutch on the right side, also is uh, citing Bergman uh, studies of minerals in uh, hot springs a while. And then what I show you, the first page are quite difficult even for Japanese nowadays. So in 1975, Yuan Semi Kaiso was rewritten in modern Japanese, including translators' comments. And it's a big book and quite expensive. And it is based, as I said, 24 chemistry books and more. And Tanaka Minoru, 1975 version of Semi Kaiso, enables and facilitates the research of Yohan's chemistry studies. And photos of several of Yohan apparatus, drawings, and copies of foreign books, covers we just saw are included. If I can see the next slide, please. Here are some of the experiments. Uh, and Johan's apparatus drawing on the left side is the Volta column to produce electricity. And Johan wrote a very much detail how you make this uh, column from some, a, a silver uh, plate and zinc or copper plate alternating to produce the current there. And on the right hand, some other experiment of pressure of water and uh, air. So he was really dedicating. And I think this uh, lower part shows some copy from uh, foreign uh, uh, drawings, but I don't know for sure. Okay. Here I mentioned that not only Semi Kaiso, but even before that, he was playing how to write what is the best way, what kanji combination or what kind of katakana combination, all many uh, uh, various uh, uh, possibilities, also for kohi, koji, kohi, and so on. And on the right side, he drew the coffee can and uh, also made one. And when I visited Tuyama uh, archive or coffee place actually, they served us coffee from a, 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 this kind of a coffee can made after uh, the guy who owns the fabrication. Okay. 
here is a copy of the cover of uh, a book by uh, Doc Tatsumasa, Professor Doc Tatsumasa, one of the elder professors, and he called it Dawn of Japanese Science. And on the cover is a photo of uh, chemical uh, bases and the tubes left in uh, Odagawa family house. And his knowledge, as I mentioned, included medical herbs. He went to the fields to, to look for some special herbs to make medicine and then botany, classic Chinese. He studied from his stepfather, uh, Odagawa Genshin. And then Dutch studies, chemistry, element name in Latin, made many drawings, music, English, Russian, German, Latin, and so on. So really a very capable, very uh, uh, genius, like one of the Japanese, right? Uh, Leonardo da Vinci of Japan, about him. Okay. Here is a page of these 1975 books. So in the upper part is the pages we saw before and on mineral spring. And the lower part is the recent writing. Now with the kanji and hiragana as is used nowadays, whereas katakana is used for foreign names of places, people, and chemicals. And this book holds 570 pages and also some ad additional uh, explanation and books about article about these uh, those translators. And I must say Hayashi, Yoshihige, and Kurokui, Seiji, because all these terms how to uh, uh, translate it to recent modern language. What did he mean? Where did he take his uh, 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 understanding from? Is very much uh, appreciated by me anyway. Okay. So what did he write about? He write about uh, solution, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, explaining, looking for what special kanji combination to use for nitrogen. And other scholars use a different kanji combination. And eventually his, uh, the one of his terms survived. And chemical affinity and caloric salts, phosphoric acid, ammonia, all these things he tries and explain in a very short way oxidation, reduction of metal, glass, ingredients of water in hot spring. And then one book, book six, tells about organic acid in plant like citric acid, oxalic acid, and very many more. And Yohan Coyne uh, mentioned 58 chemical elements that some of them, uh, not all of them were known to chemists uh, by those days. And he wrote five uh, mistaken ones like light and caloric. But Lavoisier, he wrote uh, uh, sample substances and Lavoisier put uh, light and caloric as elements. So no wonder uh, Jan following him uh, made the same uh, uh, attributes. And from the uh, list of words he, he wrote, I want to mention a couple of terms, like uh, the crystal, he coined uh, Ketsusho, and he also copied very many uh, um, shaped drawings of different uh, uh, crystals and gave them the Japanese title. And another nice, uh, a uh, term for sublimation, shoka, you know, in chemistry, the material moving from solid to gas without going through uh, liquid. But this uh, sublimation is also used today in psychology. So I think it's a very nice uh, choice by Johan to make this shoka 
that is applicable today in chemistry and psychology. Sonotsugi, onegai. Okay, I move to uh, Johan's botany book. As I mentioned, he mentioned he learned herbal plants and botany before his chemistry studies, but he drew plants as organs and coined terms for those uh, plant organs, and also uh, tried to follow Linnaeus' uh, nomenclature of uh, families of plants to uh, implement it to uh, Japanese plants. Quite heavy stuff there. But again, uh, in 2014, four Japanese scholars studied Yuan writing and drawing of plants. And for that work, uh, Yuan received some help and advice from the German physician, Funcier Bold, who worked with the Dutch delegation in the Shima Island near Nagasaki, and also the pharmacist Burger, who was uh, disabled, help and continued when disabled was uh, forced to leave Japan. The chemistry book uh, supported, this is very important, Takeda Science Foundation. Takeda is a big pharmaceutical company, but they realize because of many floods and many fires, they want to preserve this uh, uh, ancient scientific work. And they have uh, many of Udagara Yohan's original writing. And I have a chance with a Japanese colleague, Uchida Masao, to visit this uh, Osaka Takeda Science Foundation is like a vault, is very uh, severely preserved. And we had to write in advance what we are looking for. They let us look at the original only for a short time and then for copies. And when I wanted to take some, again, we had to fill some forms and apply and only later they sent it to me. So uh, this Foncier board, as I said, we see him he's, uh, with a uniform of the Dutch army that he joined and then was sent to, uh, um, uh, to first to Yava and then to Japan, to the Shima. Next one, please. And Yuan heard about him and he wanted to be friends with him. So he, he didn't meet him uh, until 19, 1826, but already 1824, apparently he sent him a very famous, very uh, a rich book by Utamaro, Book of Insects. And it comes in two parts, uh, set, putting them one near the other. It's another set, uh, lecture that should be given another time. And he wrote them, from your sincere friend with the Gawa Yuan, 1824, and he wrote in Dutch. And um, maybe the next, uh, uh, this is, I, I saw in Leiden, in the Ethnological uh, Museum and the curator there, uh, Jan, helped me to really uh, uh, have a chance to, to see. I'm very much obliged to him. Next one, please. Here we can see uh, Johan was also, before he wrote his own book, he was enlarging help his father's botany book and his uh, botany book, Shokugege Kagen, Principle of Botany. And we see in the drawing here that he uh, puts um, many parts of the, uh, of the, of the plant there and uh, giving name to each of these parts, whatever he could uh, learn and decipher. And also was, as I said, was given help in some of this uh, drawing uh, from, uh, from uh, Funcier Bold. Next one, please. 
here I can show you, this is the, the studies and Udagawa Yohan Botany work housed in the Akio Library in Takeda South Foundation. And if I tell you the secrets, I bought first the, the chemistry book. And I, I saw this book just briefly uh, uh, with the library of SOAS, the, the um, uh, uh, Japanese li uh, uh, librarian, Fuji, I think her name was, I think she doesn't work. And then when I wrote to the agent who, for, who sold me the, the chemistry book, I said, I want to buy this botany book. And he, she wrote me back, she said, it's not for sale. But the company said, if you write them a um, gift request, they will send you the book. And eventually, I, do, I wrote the request. And a couple of weeks later, there was a messenger in my door. And he brought me this uh, wonderful book. And I realized it's written there. There are only 600 volumes. And it's not for sale. But so as do have it, <laughs> in case you want to look more. Okay, next one. Here again, my uh, honor to the respect to the uh, 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 translators. So the endo, I had a chance to speak with uh, Noboshige Kato in Tokyo, one of the translators, also corresponded with him, Masataka Koda and Kiyoshi Matsu. The, and the book is mainly in Japanese, but it does have an English abstract. So, uh, and Udagawa Yohan is part of the title of the book. Okay. And the names of the authors of the original, of original books for this uh, botany book. And those include books in Dutch, English, and German. So we can see Ludwig, book of 1757. And these researchers said that they think he, uh, Johan, uh, studied a lot or mainly from Ludwig, but I'm not sure if only from him. There is an Englishman, Buster, and Noel Chomel is encyclopedia from French and Dutch. And as I said, Johan studied first the word botany from him. And the book in English by Thomas Martin, many drawings there that Johan could copy uh, those draw some of those drawings from there. And he pay we saw already, he translated both uh, into Dutch, both chemistry and uh, botany. And Joachim Sprengel book, in German, I'll uh, stop and show a little bit more about him, his book then. Okay. Here are some of the uh, drawings, flower drawing by Johan, in one of the two uh, drawing books of uh, plants. And it also showed that Siebold wrote flowers name in the bottom of each of these flowers, like Pyrus Japonica. Thunberg, TH is for Thunberg, one of the first Swedish, uh, even 1774, five, six, that he was in Japan and studied a lot of those plants before. And also another plant, Smilax. Next one, please. The one I like very much is this uh, nasu, Japanese eggplants. And you can see how he, he really draws the flower in the face, by the side, and in the back, studying each of the details of this uh, a, a plant. And you are also wrote there some of his um, understanding of the name there. The other photo is another of the plants. And this one actually 
uh, Fulciebold. He sent it to Johan and he wrote him, I gave this plant your name. It's written in the upper left corner. It's difficult to say, but he, he gave the name, uh, Johan's name as a courtesy of their uh, friendship again before departure really. Okay, so this Nasu is excellent. And the sources, what, um, sources and you on. Uh, I studied a lot from the PhD study, a dissertation of Togo Tsukahara, now professor in Kobe. And he mentioned the book by McLean, Japanese Studies in the History of Science, Introduction of Books and Scientific Instruments into Japan. We'll see some more next slide, just a minute. And Sprengel, Introduction to Botany from Halle. And this was the gift, Siebold gift to Johan in 1826. And it was another reference book for uh, Shokugeki Kagan. Another source, uh, books donated by members of the Dutch delegation, the Shima, and when they had to leave Japan, some of them, they gave the books they had, they owned to the scholars. There was a translation bureau uh, of Western books founded in 1811, and Yuan became a member of this official member in 18. Uh, uh, 26. So they had some colleagues they could consult with while working occasionally. Okay. So what was the origin of those books? There was a shipping books and scientific instruments from Holland to Japan. A source survey in archive was carried out by McLean uh, searching for the year 1712-1854. He studied the records of the Dutch factory in the Shima in this island near Nagasaki in Japan, where the Dutch delegation was sitting. And also from colonial records, both preserved in the archive, state archive in the Hague, the Netherlands. And, um, Only these ships, when they arrived, the delegation had to go from Nagasaki all the way to Edo, Tokyo, every half a year, later half a, every one year, and to bring gifts to the shogun there and information about what's going on in the world. So that was part of exchanging gifts and knowledge between those delegation and the rulers and scholars there. McLean listed the year that the ship arrived, its name, its captain name, the scientific instruments it brought and books that were imported. And uh, the name of those who ordered the item are also listed like some of the rulers of some of the provinces. It says he ordered it and many dictionaries of like even Dutch, Dutch dictionary or Dutch German dictionary. Uh, some dictionary were also quite useful and microscopes and telescopes and uh, some measuring tools were also uh, shipped uh, to Japan. Okay. I want to show one of the translation example. Introduction to Botany. This is the book cover I show, the middle one of these three pieces. And Siebel, in his dedication to Johan, wrote to my eager to learn friend, Wudagawa Johan, in Dutch. And on the other side, uh, the guy Johan wrote his feeling and knowledge. He said, Sprengel was a member of many scholarly society 
and in the management of a botanical garden in Halle. And he added, this is from a New Hampshire garden by Udagawa Yuan. So really there was a good exchange of information between them. Actually in 1826, when the delegation, one of those Dutch delegation came to Edo, they stayed in uh, one hotel. And uh, for several times, uh, Johan and other scholars could, could visit the, the Dutch uh, delegation members there and exchange information. Okay, I'm nearly there. And that Sprengel book in German, Johan realized that the German is similar to Dutch. So he opened a notebook uh, called Sprengel Lexicon, and it holds 70 pages. And there are three colors of uh, German, Dutch, and Japanese. And for instance, two examples, Bluthen in German, he wrote Bluthe or Bleisom, and then he uh, translated Hanasekum, Blossom, and also for German Blau, he didn't have, didn't add the Dutch, but he could write in Japanese, uh, Aoi, Blue. So by this, 70 pages, and it's a, in the yellow page, you can see it's alphabetically ordered, also, you can see the mark of what uh, worms were reading and eating some of those uh, pages during the years. So really very uh, authentic uh, representation. And I think uh, next one is about to bring us to a summary. Udagawa Yohan studied book in chemistry and botany from Europe that were imported to Japan by Dutch ships. In his book, he relied upon many various sources originally in Dutch and then in English, French, Latin, and Swedish. He invented terms for chemistry. Some of his terms are still in use today. And Yohan's successor that I didn't touch today continued and deepened basic and applied chemistry studies. And along the year, prosperous chemical industry was developed in Japan. And since 1981, Fukui Kenichi from Kyoto uh, was the first one to receive Nobel Prize in chemistry, Japanese. And by 2019, Akira Yoshino, Altogether, eight Japanese were awarded Nobel Chemistry Prizes. So this is really quite impressive, I think. And I want to thank, in the next slide, many of my uh, uh, colleagues along the year. Professor Masanori Kaji passed away a few years ago. He was the first one who mentioned Udagawa Yohan to me. Professor Shin Sato was my first professor when I was a student at Tokyo Institute of Technology and still continued all these years to uh, advise and support my writing. Professor Frederick Kreis in Ichibunken in Kyoto was my host there for one year and still helped me with understanding some of the Japanese thought. Professor Tatsume Doke, one of the first one to study Udagawa Yohan. Professor Toru Azuma is studying word by word, sentence by sentence, where did Yohan uh, learn from. Professor Yasu Furukawa, one of the historian of chemistry, also studied in America. And I took a seminar for half a year with him. Professor Hirofumi Ochiai is a colleague in the uh, philosophy of chemistry international company. Masumi Osawa gave me original uh, semi kaiso book copies, maybe six of the seven volumes. Masao Uchida helped me in the very beginning in the Osaka visit. Togo Tsukahara, PhD studies I mentioned. Naoto Omichi helped me with this uh, faking announcement translation. 
Kato Nobushige is uh, the botany professor. You know, Dr. Ka Jakub Bektas is my uh, colleague at Tokyo Institute of Technology, very hospitable and helping me with finding my ways. Dr. Karl Grandin in Sweden, in Stockholm, uh, Royal Sweden uh, Science Society. Professor Simon Vega and Dr. Johan de Graaf helped me with Dutch translation. My friend, Dr. Nomi Sofer helped me with editing. And then I had many colleagues from the Japanese Society for the History of Chemistry and librarian in Japan, Israel, England, and Holland helped me just as well. I skipped the uh, 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 references, one, next one. Once you want them, you may uh, get them later. And um, maybe the last uh, item here is a joint work by Kikuchi Yoshiyuki and myself, A History of Chemistry in Japan. It's about to be published in Asia Chem very soon. And uh, last one is the source. Last uh, slide, please. Yeah, this uh, volume of Substantia of March and the article about the chemistry studies, much more detailed that I could uh, present tonight here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That was a fascinating uh, journey from all the way from the 18th century up to the present with the Nobel Prize um, winners. Um, I wanted to remind the audience that you can ask questions via the Q&A function, uh, but also you can put them in the, in, into the chat. And if you want to speak, um, you can raise your hand functionalities you find at the bottom of the screen. Um, now, I was, I was wondering because, uh, I mean, there's, there seems to be two things going on at the same time that I find very interesting. On one hand, you have the translation, which really is a question often of invention, as you have shown with those examples. Shoka, for me, was very interesting because that's also used in, in psychoanalytic translations for sublimation. Uh, and of course, the, the German word that Freud uses is also um, the same words that is used uh, in German um, in chemistry. So I was wondering where, so it's a, in a sense, this allows us also to understand not only the origin of, of chemistry in Japan, but also how Ateji, for example, work when you showed that small little uh, table about Kohi, right? How can you do that? One was wonderful, Kaori no Yu, uh, a sort of a smelling water or, or a fragrant water as a translation um, for coffee. And so I, I wanted to ask you, uh, the, the ateji for semi, for shimi, you said it was derived from French. Um, or, but can you or, say or, something? Or, or Dutch, or Dutch actually. Or Dutch, right. And I, I was wondering what, what um, what's the, um, the individual signs, how did, 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 did was there any, um, reflection on how to translate that. How to how did he go from shimi to semi? I think uh, it's more like ateji, like phonetic reading, and yet uh, there is some secret there. I think this uh, kanji uh, I cannot show it, but you know, uh, I found that it. Um, the kanji for uh, secret. So I think it's nice that even though it's just a phonetic, it has a connotation that there is something secret in the chemistry studies. So that's a smart, but I didn't mention uh, later years, the, they do not use this term anymore. And the word is kagaku, mm. the, the um, art of change, which they took from uh, Chinese. It's a Chinese writing, but a Japanese reading, Kagaku. Right, I think, I mean, that in itself is very interesting. So it's from something secret, which is very much when, when chemistry came about was, you know, it's the, the, the invisible 
building blocks of, of matter itself to something that is more focused on the idea of transformation. I think that's very interesting. So we have a question in the Q&A uh, function and I shall read it out. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Siderer. Um, the question is from Carlos Andres Barbosa Cepeda. I'm especially interested in how Utagawa's knowledge of Chinese classics influenced his translation decisions. To mention a very interesting example, Kangen for reduction. Uh, Udagawa Yoan was sent as an adopted child to uh, Udagawa family. And he studied with um, Udagawa Genshin and he wanted to study um, Dutch. But Genshin said, no, you must learn classic Chinese first. And also in order to be able to be a, a formal translator, Dutch is not uh, sufficient, uh, not at all. Dutch is important. And then he had a very uh, vast knowledge of, uh, of, uh, of kanji uh, from which to choose from. And I don't remember now the, the terms from uh, reduction, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Um, there's an there's an other there's a question in the chat from Katia Triplett. Um, thank you so much for your informative presentation on this fascinating scholar. I was wondering if you have come across an English translation or other European language of Johan's Bodanika Kyo. Um, is it quoted a lot? But it it is quoted a lot. But it seems that it has not been translated yet. Translation of what? Say it again, please. Uh, Botanika Kyo. You can see, if you look at the chat, you can see that the kanji, it's like the Bodai uh, starts and, and then Nika Kyo, Kyo, like for a sutra. Uh, I, I, I suggest there is a mention in this uh, English preface of the bot botany book. They, they, uh... This is the, the, the sutra the, of botany that is written in kanji only. It's a more ancient that uh, as Kagan, but uh, I have a paper in Japanese from Michibunken about it, but I don't remember seeing anything uh, um, in English about that. But the, the, uh, the, there was a study about him, about this uh, sutra. I, I cannot uh, tell much more. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, uh, yes, there's, it, it, this uh, is recorded and the recordings will be uploaded um, by next um, week. And Donadella Faya, from, right from Genoa, uh, thanks very much for the interesting talk. I look forward to other talks about natural sciences in Japan. Until soon, I hope, uh, Donatella Faya. Thank you very much. Um, right, any more questions, please um, be not afraid to raise your hand or to uh, put them into either the chat or into um, the queue and a there I also found very interesting the drawings um, that you, you said on one hand, the galvanic column um, that was sort of reconstructed or, or redrawn by him, but the other ones il illustrating the water pressure, um, they were probably copies. And I, I thought it was very interesting because you can, you can only see the hand, but there is a, a quite elaborate um, sleeve yes, on, the, <laughs> on the arm. Right. I thought that was that was an interesting detail, uh, uh, and I wonder whether that uh, you know whether that was part of whether he copied that or whether that was an addition. I, I assume so, but for the uh, Volta column in the Tsuyama Western uh, Archives, you can see a model of this uh, uh, Volta column of the experiment that you are on device. And as I said, he wrote a detailed explanation how to construct by 30 or 15 layers 
of these uh, 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 point uh, metals. And he also wrote that uh, the silver side is called uh, like uh, anode, the positive, and the other side is called, and he gives the, the, the Dutch terms that I don't remember, but uh, the cathode, the, the, the negative uh, pole. Mm. So we really understand, that's what I, I is impressing. He really understand what he was, uh, what he was writing about, or oh, at least some of them. And actually uh, Tanaka Minoro in one of his articles mentioned uh, some Yuan misunderstanding or mistranslating of uh, some of the things. And also one of the critics that he didn't write, did uh, enter the term atom. He did write genso in the botany, like uh, a element. But another point is that even in Europe, it was a time of uh, chemistry, uh, a, a progress. And some of the books in Dutch were, or other languages, were not ex like uh, the, the whole idea of a phlogiston. You get it or you don't right. get it. So when he was getting into some, uh, uh, um, some ideas that contradict each other, maybe he didn't know what to take and maybe he neglected it. So I think uh, he didn't want to get into Dalton and that was done um, after him. Right, thank you. There's another comment uh, at the beginning. Uh, thank you very much uh, from Natsue Hayward. Uh, thank you very much for the interesting talk. I would like to recommend a new book from Brill, The Dutch Language in Japan, uh, 1600 to 1900 by Christopher Joby, published in 2021. Not only about your own botany and chemistry, but it can be interesting um, to some people. And again, if you have any more questions, um, please. I, I, I hope you'll send me the, the, the lectures later. Yes, and, and it, uh, uh, as I just added, that covers a lot about translation process about how uh, terms were translated from Dutch um, into, um, into, into Japanese. There is another uh, um, earlier book about botany, about Dodeneus translation. And there's several articles there and they show the difficulties in, in understanding and translating. And also the title of the Japanese books is changing from the Dutch and that one is changing from the original one. So the work to decipher which book Yon was translating was something that uh, Japanese study, but also uh, Dutch people studied since uh, still the uh, 19th century. So that's another uh, approach. And um, I mentioned in the, um, somewhere there, there is a German dictionary of chemistry dictionary that you can get, read all the uh, explanation how Japanese term, or for instance, in a later article I published about translating Roscoe chemistry from English to is a 1870 book from English to uh, Japanese about the same time, but uh, 1929, it was translated to Hebrew. And I showed the difference in the cultural aspects of the translation. And uh, for instance, Japanese, if you take a two uh, sodium chloride, what you put first, the sodium or the chloride? And Israeli scholars also uh, uh, contemplated, should they say natran chlori or chlorida natran? Should you see, see the, the cation first or the uh, anion first? And the number of the uh, atoms the Japanese put in the beginning of the formula. So those are very um, tiny, but important. Uh, Yon has some uh, oxidation of nitrogen and oxidation of sulfur in very different stages. And there is, I, I have a table 
how he translated the various uh, uh, oxidation set of the sulfur in the oxida oxidized uh, compounds. But I didn't want to enter into deep chemistry. <laughs> Although really that is, is very, it's a very interesting question, right? What do you put first? Do you think there is sort of a, um, that there is a, a sort of a cultural logic behind that? If you say sodium bicarbonate or, you know, uh, carbonate sodium, where does the, well, okay, where does the, the bi end up? But, but uh, yes, I mean, there, there is also, the person who first came up with the term also had to make that decision, right? It's two components. So which ones do yes. you put first? I think the, the Israeli scholars, but that's uh, early, like in the 1930s, but they already knew the chemistry because they learned in, in German before. And they thought, but Israeli students will have to read English. It's better to put the Hebrew term in the English orders, like sodium chloride and natron chloride, that's way. But uh, uh, the Japanese is not the same. Okay, and that, in a sense, yes, also so brings up the question that you 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 mentioned um, only briefly the idea that I mean, obviously, this is not a body of knowledge that is static in any way, but each decade probably adds something new. And I wonder whether Udagawa Yohan was aware of that, that he was what he was compiling as sort of a canon of chemistry actually had very diverse sources, not only geographically, but also in terms of time. Some of these things uh, uh, were published um, uh, quite a bit earlier. And as you mentioned with the Phlogiston, uh, some theories sort of came in and out of fashion. Was there an awareness that this was not a sort of received body of knowledge, but something that is in the process of, of being discovered, so to speak? Uh, one of the remarks of the translators, uh, they, uh, in the article I showed, they, uh, and the article is online, and they show that there is a, uh, like three books open in, sta in, in, in front of Johan, like uh, a smaller book and maybe Ipe and one more, I don't remember. And he looks at them and he decides, he chooses what to take from. So with like, um, you know, a thoughtful approach to uh, distill in a short way, what, what should be uh, put in his book. And um, yeah, there is also uh, a chronological bio biography of his set of his diaries that I didn't enter yet, but one day, but I think I have a lecture about the, that I did, did give about the botany and I didn't publish yet. I hope I shall be able to do it uh, sometime. Actually, my recent uh, research, May, is coming to the uh, 20th century and is about uh, a woman chemist, um, Kuroda Chika. And she started learning 1913 for the first time who could enter Tohoku uh, Daigaku. Mm. And graduated and there is a whole story there also organic chemistry uh, dyes uh, uh, plant chemistry he or she also worked in oxford a couple of years 1921 23 eventually became a professor and very or hardly known uh, out of japan maybe not so much in japan as well so my uh, research now is about her Oh, that sounds fascinating. And I would add sort of, yes, coming up into the 20th century. Um, so please, if you have any more burning questions, uh, put them in the Q&A or into the chat. I have one more thing that I thought was really interesting. Uh, it's a bit speculative, perhaps. But uh, when you showed the different terms that uh, Udagawa Yohan sort of had to invent, so to speak, uh, or to 
in order to translate, there was the term chemical affinity. And I immediately was reminded of the ways in which chemical affinity, you know, in, in, in the European world, how important it has become through the work of Goethe, who wrote the whole play uh, around it, around this idea, yes, that there is some kind of, you know, underlying um, affinity that goes beyond kinship. And later, of course, in Max Weber's uh, work um, on uh, Protestantism and, uh, and uh, the spirit of capitalism, where you also have this idea of chemical affinity. So it, it seems that the, the idea was used as a metaphor um, in sociology and in the social sciences uh, more broadly to sort of um, express something that was very difficult to express without having this kind of chemical language. Uh, and I wonder whether there was anything similar happening in Japan. The, the topic of uh, chemical affinity was very popular, like in William Henry books and so on. So uh, um, what ion pushes another one from a compound, but, and there is a list of affinity tables and so on, but it, uh, I didn't, it didn't survive. I mean, it's not so much in use nowadays. So um, I don't remember entering into Yohan, but I think uh, uh, maybe uh, Togo Tsukuhara in his uh, PhD dissertation, he, he uh, I think he touched this uh, topic a little bit more. Excellent. Thank you. So if there are no further questions, I'm sort of counting down, um, then it remains for me uh, to thank our speaker. Thank you very much uh, for joining us today and to give us such an interesting uh, presentation. Um, we will continue in two weeks time um, on February uh, the 9th, and we'll sort of return to the contemporary scene with two speakers, Daniel White uh, from Cambridge and uh, Hirofumi Katsuno from Doshisha University, and they will be talking about animating amusement, the seriousness of robot play in contemporary Japan. So please join us then again, and please join me in thanking Dr. Jonas Sidderer for her talk today. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much.